to Little Hampton Bricks. Um, as I said before, we're uh, uh, over 100 years old. We still uh, make our bricks and pavers using a batch kiln. Uh, it does give us a lot more flexibility in what we do. We're very agile. We're actually able to innovate and make things like new products, different products all the time. This is our dis new display walls that we've actually recently updated uh, with a stack of our new products. And we've got new ones coming all the time, like we've got blush, which is a, a fairly new but very popular product, starting to get some traction over in the uh, eastern seaboard. Uh, McLaren, which is uh, instead of using a tumbled brick, we actually roll the edges, so they've got a wonky roller on there. Um, and you get a black one and a blue one every square metre. Yep. The rest of it is basically made up of reds and whites. Um, another new one is Impresso, which is our coach house brick with the same treatment. And then Ash, which is right down there. We actually only just released that about a month ago. And then we've got Midnight, that coach house brick is, uh, was uh, Peter Robinson for Robinson Building yeah. Products in Victoria helped yeah. us make that. Oh, okay. So this is our paver yard, basically where we store all, all of our pavers. Yeah. These old kilns, as you'll see, have been around since 1892. Um, they're not used as kilns anymore. We actually use them for <laughs> what we're going to use them today. Okay, so um, as you're probably aware, making a clay product, a brick or a paver is almost like baking a cake. Okay, so that's our mixing bowl there. And that's our mixer. Depending on what we're making, we're currently making, we've made Hills Gold pavers, and now they've swapped over now to make our coach house brick. So depend, they actually use the same mixture, okay. except the coach house has an extra additive, like a manganese powder that we add it into the mixture to yep. give it that sort of darker blended color. So what he will do there is whatever different clays we need to mix together, he puts them there and he mixes them together as much as he can. As we go down here further, he will take the mixed clay from here, which has still got rocks and really quite hard clay in it. It goes into that first hopper there, which has got a crushing, a crusher on the front of it, which will crush it up into bite-sized chunks. Up into that hopper, there's another crusher. There's two, so it goes through two crushing processes. Basically, the, the clay needs to be fine enough to go through that screen, which is like a big sieve, um, when the bits that are fine enough to go through end up on that conveyor belt. The bits that are not will go back through, back up into that hopper up there. They get crushed again until they're fine enough that they can go through that screen. So that's basically just going round and round and round like that. They have a built, it has a built-in gas heater. Okay. In winter, when it gets really wet, it basically dries it enough to go through the sieve. From there, up this conveyor belt, right up the top into this heat, this hopper up here. As you can see by all of the uh, wet bricks over there, uh, they're basically off cuts. We don't waste anything here. So anything that we don't use, we'll go back out onto there. It gets mixed up again. Yep. Back through the crusher, blah, 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 up into here. And we make bricks more, more bricks or pavers out of it. So as you can see here, there's a slight drip of powder that's literally going onto the top of the clay. It's not very much at all. Yeah. That's that's as much manganese as they need to put into the into the clay to make that like that browny black blend. That's a magnet. Uh, basically, any metal that's in the clay itself gets sucked out. In the old days, you see black spots on faces of bricks. Yes. That was metal. That was like metal melted. So the mix, the fine clay, basically comes up there with the manganese on top into the pug mill. Um, and this is where it's basically mixed. This is where we'll actually add water. So that they literally add like a drip of water. There's not very much. No, it doesn't look bad. It's quite a dry mix when you, when you get down here and actually feel how dry it is. So that basically mixes it as it goes along here and forces it, extrudes it through here and it extrudes out there. So all these little, off again, we don't waste anything. It all goes back in. It all gets mixed back up. So on top of this brick, when we get down there, you'll be able to see it. Yeah. They're actually dropping uh, coal and, and coke and, and all sorts of rocks yeah. on top of the brick. Oh, and it gets it rolled into the face. Yeah, nice. So it gives it quite a rough texture. Okay, so the clay log extrudes out here. It's just one continuous log. Comes out to here. They're dropping, well actually dropping sand on. These are pavers, sorry. Ah. They're mahogany pavers. Okay. They've tricked me. Okay. So that's just sand. It basically stops the, the clay from sticking together yeah. when they put them down. So that log just strews out. They cut it into bite-sized chunks. 
So they get cut into 1.5 metre lengths. And there'll be basically two of them, and they both go down. And then the ram will push them through, and they're basically, that's where they're cut into pavers. We find, like, the square edge pavers that we make give really good flexibility to whoever's like using them yeah. because they can be laid both ways up yeah, right. you get absolute minimal waste um, and as you've seen by Victor Harbour yeah, yeah. it allows you to do that sort of stuff that okay. we didn't sort them that way they laid them that way yeah, right. so obviously um, when you when you're cooking in a in a batch kiln at 1100 degrees you can't put timber in yeah. there so they actually have to be stacked on themselves yeah. so it actually stacks um, whatever we're making into packs. At, depending on what we're making, they are stacked differently. These are pavers, so what you'll find is the pavers on both sides there will be quite hard burnt. Yeah. So they'll be in mahogany, they'll be black. In Hills Gold, they'll be caramel or purple. Yeah, okay. The one in the middle doesn't get exposed to the heat, so that's where you get the blend of colours come through. So that'll be a slight, like, almost a totally different colour. Yeah. What the machine does, it turns them around, almost turns them over, it gaps them so that they are able to be stacked like they are here. See in there, that's where the, they get pushed through the wire and cut into pavers. And then this machine picks them up, turns them around, and then it spaces them automatically over there. So that's the last bit of space left. Right, so basically it takes us five weeks to make anything. All right, so this week we make them. Yep and they get, at, they get put out on the floor there to dry. So on um, Monday morning, the kiln will be empty, yes. and it, it's emptied at the other end there, which is the sorting bay where we grade them. What's in, that's the dryer there. What's in the dry goes into the kiln. What's been sitting on the floor goes into the dryer, and then they close it up and get it fired up again. Yep. So we actually turn our kilns on on a Monday. We turn them off on a Thursday. It takes three days for it to cool down enough for us to get in there and get everything out and then we start again, yeah. basically. So that's why we can only make a certain amount of product yeah, each right. year. Yeah. So a batch kiln, you turn it on, you turn it off, you turn it on, you turn it off. A tunnel kiln never turns off. So we fire at about 1160 degrees. We use recycled waste oil. So your fish and chips, you, when you go and get a service on your car, you see all these trucks driving around picking up the oil. That gets refined for us. We use about 30,000 litres a week to fire our kilns. So it's a waste product, the byproduct of which is mostly steam. So you'll see the, the chimneys up here, you'll be able to see that a bit later. All right, we'll go around this way. So don't look directly in if you can, just look at an angle, you'll be able to see, you'll see the, the, the double stacked inside there. So it's actually just warming up right now. For another, about lunchtime tomorrow, it reaches operating temperature, which is about 1100, 11 to 1200 degrees, basically. So um, there's six burners there, the burners. Once they actually reach operating temperature, they actually pull those out. So when we get down there and they grade them, you'll actually get a variation between the top pack and the, lot, the bottom pack. Our sandstock brick we actually grade into dark and light blends. Yeah, right. So um, when we're going out doing matchups, we, we know we've got the two different colours. Same brick, exactly the same brick, just they look different because their colours look oh, different. They're clay. Yes, that's right. So this is the front of the kiln. Um, so that's, that'll stay closed until Monday. By Friday, this will all be empty. They would have graded everything. So every single product that we make, doesn't matter what it is, brick or paver, gets hand graded and the good stuff goes on a pallet, the bad stuff goes on a pallet. We still sell seconds as a product that can be used. We make a lot of stuff to order, so we're small enough with the batch kiln yep. that can we, we can be flexible. Yep. So I've just won a contract for, the, um, for KI. They have specified some products we've never made before. Okay. Um, we know we can do it because we make others in the same size. It's just a different size. Right, but yeah. we are flexible enough to be able to do that. We talk to architects all the time. That blush brick was actually developed in conjunction with an architect from the Adelaide oh. Hills. So basically when the kiln is turned off, which is roughly lunchtime on Thursday, the heat from the kiln is actually funneled into the dryer. Oh, yep. So it gives what's in there just a little bit extra. Because if you put something in the kiln too wet, blows up. 
So what you see out, basically these are the bricks stacked out, ready to go. Um, probably the easiest way I can show you the colour variation. Well, actually I can show it with the Adelaide Red too, because yeah, you can actually see it right there. Yeah. You've got your darker blends there and your lighter ones. Even that's a darker blend of sandstock, that's a lighter blend of sandstock. Same brick, probably in the same kiln, yeah. just um, stacked out and graded so that it's ready for um, people to, to buy. Um, part of my job is actually doing matchups. So I go to site when someone's doing an extension mm. and try and match the colour. Yeah. So we don't make the colour to order, we match the colour with what we have. So our last stop is in our little R&D shed. Oh, great. So you get to have a look at some of the stuff that we're actually working on. We are working on our Roman brick at the moment. Oh yeah. This is research and development. That's it? Yeah. yeah so that's, we don't, uh, the colour is not really important there. Yeah. We just needed to be able to push it out of the, to extrude it. Get someone to do it locally here. Yeah. But then Daniel started, Robertson, Peter started bringing them in. Yes. But they're that expensive. If they you are. can get these down, there's such a market for them. Absolutely. And whereas ours are going to have holes in them. Which is great. The beauty of that is less um, twist, less bow, yes. we hope. Well, you know, some of them, <laughs> we some hope. Of them have just been using pavers. Yeah, that's, and you could, you yeah. could. We actually did some display walls up of our Venice bricks yeah, yeah. using the sides of pavers, using pavers, because they could be used as a brick. Yeah. Exactly. And we are also working on a smooth, a smooth oh, yeah. grey or blue or black, whatever colour you call that, yeah. brick <laughs> that will actually make the shapes to go with it. So our sandstock bricks, we make all of the old shapes. So we make stretcher plinths and bull noses and cants and vents. Yep. Um, so we're going to be able to do the same thing with this particular brick when we can actually get it right. So, and there are our little Stardust pavers we've just released, being very popular. I had architects asking me for them for probably the last seven years. Yeah, right. And yeah, we started well, making them 12 months ago and they've They've used them to their credit. Yeah. They are using them. So then we've gone down the glaze line with white bricks. We may make a glaze brick, we're not sure. Um, they're looking at a gold one, uh, a red, a red one. So uh, that's the beauty of being like being small like we are. We can actually try these things. Everything that we do, mm -hmm. we do ourselves. We're small, there's only 15 people that work here all together. Yeah. Um, that's including a subcontract track driver. So basically, that is our yes. factory tour.